Hi, Sharon Labatt, visual artist currently at Hanson Ross House in Fort Capel. My talk today will include a slideshow and some brief video clips. It will focus on landscapes past and present and some portraiture work which I have just started to explore. I've called this talk Upon Reflection because it is a look at the past and it also references the current water reflection series that I have been doing. If you check out my website, you'll discover that I have completed a number of series. I'll see you again at the end of this presentation. My current studio overlooks Echo Lake. I'm fortunate to have lots of windows, natural light, and an inspiring view. For 12 years, I rented studio space in town, which had benefits. A coffee shop nearby to meet friends, my dog enjoyed the passers-by, and there were few interruptions. Having my own space to work is a necessity. I can spread out, sketch, paint, make a mess, and at the end of the day, walk out and close the door. It gives me the time and privacy required to create. I completed a Bachelor of Arts in Education at the University of Regina and took fine arts classes there and through the University of Saskatchewan Satellite Program. I was a printmaking major because of my love of drawing. Due to the toxicity of the printmaking process taught in Regina, I didn't continue with it after I left. Two etchings included here were in the group show Coppell Tale of Two Valleys, which showed at the Mendel Art Gallery in Saskatoon, the Mackenzie Gallery in Regina, and the Kleinberg, Ontario. My partner and I made a number of trips to northern Saskatchewan lakes. Morning Lake was our favorite. He fished, I painted. Around this time, the Saskatchewan Writers Guild held week-long retreats at Emma Lake and St. Peter's Munster in Saskatchewan. This was open to visual artists and I attended a number of times. It was a great opportunity to meet other artists, share ideas and work in the large open studio or on the spacious grounds. I also took a number of classes from established artists at Kenderdine campus. The oil painting Fairy Island was the first and foreshadowed the later water reflection works using short brush strokes on a colored ground. Growing up in Canada with its highly acclaimed group of seven and living in a non-urban setting, landscape painting seemed a natural interest. At first it was the land itself, with big open skies that appealed. Later, when I felt I had explored this approach, I included lakes and waterways. It was common knowledge that artists should paint what they know. I know the water of lakes and rivers, the way the light bounces on waves, the reflection of sun and shoreline on the water. I see it every day. My partner and I have canoed and sailed together. We even entered regattas. Gradually, it was the reflection of sky and shoreline and the movement of the water itself that captured my interest. This resulted in the water reflection series in which I eliminated entirely the sky, landforms, and shoreline. Some have said, oh, you paint in so many different styles, but I paint 
in a manner that best expresses the ideas and emotions I want to convey. As my work became more abstract, I focused more on the materials themselves, how they could be applied and layered. Years ago, I studied color theory, painting numerous charts of color combinations, and this knowledge has served me well. I always stretch my own prime canvases. This becomes a contemplative act to slowly begin a new work. However, I must admit painting on a primed wood panel is a real treat. I admire the abstract work of German artist Gerhard Richter. The underpaintings in his work consist of many layers and are crucial to the finished piece. Working on the top layer, he loads a wide squeegee tool he developed and drags the paint across the surface. These smears result in very courageous and striking work, so much so that they're worth seven figures. I have always used a colored ground. Because of the way I apply short strokes with a brush or palette knife, the underpainting shows and is very important. The first layer has large blocks of acrylic paint. Sometimes acrylic ink follows. Then I apply tinted pouring medium with a large palette knife in a very thin layer. I don't allow the colors to mix. There are paintings of randomly applied thick pouring gel where the chemicals mix creating the piece, but this technique doesn't interest me. I like the depth, shine, and smooth surface created with the gel. The final layer consists of a variety of mark making using brushes and palette knives. I was fortunate to have a few trips to the Bahamas where I did plein air painting and took many photos. The crystal clear water over white sand was hard to resist and I did a number of studio paintings following those trips. A couple was in the gallery one day, saw this canoe painting, and said, I know that experience, I've been there. They walked out, turned around and came back in, and he said, if I don't buy that piece, I'll never forgive myself. So they did. I have included some photos that I've taken. I call them inspiration photos, and I use them to paint from in the studio, especially during our long, cold winters. In 2018 and 2019, I took two four-day classes from Mark Daniels Nelson at the Scottsdale School of Art in Arizona. 
Marx's Classes, Part 1 and Part 2, Realism to Abstraction, discuss the ground rules. Through lecture, slideshow, and studio work, we explored the transition in painting style. He said you need to know the rules before you break them. My question was, can realism and abstraction be successfully combined in one painting, as in my canoe, pelican, and loon pieces? I believe I have done so successfully. When I returned home, I applied what I had learned to some of our local landscapes, and I was rather pleased with the result. A few years ago, I started painting portraits of my grandchildren. I then took a five-day class from Jeff Hine, Master Portrait Painter of America, in 2016 at the Scottsdale School of Art in Arizona. This nonprofit offers 15 to 20 classes in a number of areas year-round. The instructors are some of the best in their field across the United States. Jeff is classically trained, based on the old masters, in a style he calls naturalistic painting. No devices were allowed in the classroom, no photographing the model to put into a gridded iPhone app, no photo enlargement to better see an eye or lip, no calipers to measure ratio distances, just you, your brush, and the model. It was this application of color that impressed me. Using a fan brush, the first acceptable use I've seen, he would lightly feather in a crosshatch motion one complementary color over another. For example, mauve over light yellow ochre, over mauve again, back to yellow ochre. Stepping back, you didn't see the separate color because your eye blended it into a beautiful neutral tone. In January 2020, I had hip replacement surgery. Prior to this, I moved most of my supplies into the house and set up on my dining room table. When sufficiently recovered, I started painting an hour or so a day. Then COVID isolation hit and I just carried on. I was asked to do a commission very different from my usual work and I accepted. I was allowed the freedom to make my, it my own as long as it delivered the message. And thus the Destiny series came into being. The first piece I titled Destiny Untamed. Destiny meaning the inevitable course of events, untamed as in impossible to subdue or defeat. All three represent the cycle of life. Green leaves for youth, autumn colors for middle age, grays and purples older age. Today the crow symbolizes change and the dove announces new worlds or beginnings opening up. The stylized face is any woman. The long neck shows vulnerability and at the same time trust. The lips represent passion and vitality. The overall message is to live life to the fullest as best we can, while we can. Thanks for joining me today on my artistic journey. Special thanks to friends, family, and patrons who have encouraged and supported me over the years. To the galleries and to Hanson Ross House for showing my work. To SAS Galleries for your work in promoting Saskatchewan artists and the galleries. You make a difference. I have enjoyed sharing this time with you. See you in the gallery.